for the fourth year in a row, Australia's most trusted cruise brand, P&O Cruises, is proud to support the Kennedy Awards and to honour the New South Wales Journalist of the Year. In November, P&O Cruises welcomed Pacific Eden and Pacific Aria to become a five-ship fleet, the largest cruise ship fleet based year-round in Australia. Friends, we're at the, the last uh, one of the night. Can I just uh, thank Adam Walters uh, and everything, uh, everyone that's put, that put together tonight uh, to bring together the celebration of excellence. I thank him for that video in particular. I have never danced like that. Uh, if I did dance like that, my wife might actually dance with me. Uh, she's too embarrassed to dance with me at the moment, so I hope I can do that. Andrew Clonell on the leaking. Uh, yeah, that's a good strategy, leaking to Andrew Clonell. Uh, if you leak to Andrew Clonell, you end up photoshopped on the front page of the Daily Telegraph. So. Uh, that is not exactly a recommended strategy. Uh, I will say that as a general approach to life. Um, can I also just say that it is about excellence, uh, what we've come together tonight to celebrate. Uh, I didn't actually show that today. Uh, I spoke at a school. Um, I spoke to them. Uh, I heard the principal talk about how the school started at 7.30 a.m. with maths. Um, and I made the point when I spoke, uh, that's a long day and what a terrible way to start your school day uh, by doing maths. Uh, and then there was horror in the room, uh, and I saw people cringe, uh, and I realised I was at St Paul's, a Catholic school, uh, and it was maths, not maths. <laughs> so anyway, I recovered. I said, oh, no, 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 oh, okay, no, maths is fantastic. What a great way to start the day. Anyway, so I won't be asked back to many Catholic schools, that's my tip. Uh, but it is um, in, a, in a more excellent moment, um, and I do just want to take 60 seconds on this because... I'm genuine about this, and that is, uh, I think I saw uh, this room come together as one uh, in the siege events that we saw in the city late last year. We've already heard some outstanding comments uh, on the impacts that that had on the city. Everyone here is not going to be the same again uh, on the back of what we saw. Uh, we saw tragedy, uh, but we also saw, in the midst of it, this city come together like I've never, ever witnessed. And, and, and I think, I mean, I saw journalists cry. I saw journalists ask all the right questions. But what you did so powerfully was demonstrate to this city, to this state, to this country, to the world, how much we love this place. Uh, you also said that what we have here is so special. And for those who didn't have the opportunity to come to Martin Place, well, you managed to translate it. And that is a rare gift that you all have. So I genuinely thank you uh, for the broad excellence you showed because at a time that we needed to come together, we did. And we did it on your collective work. So thank you, and it's great to be able to celebrate great journalism tonight. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. so the finalists... Uh, for the Journalist of the Year, Cairo Meldum Hanna from Four Corners, Phil Rothfield from the Daily Telegraph, Buzz, and Chris Reason from Seven News. Thank you, Premier. And the winner is Cairo Meldum Hanna, Four Corners, ABC TV. Cairo Meldum Hanna's far reaching, disturbing, and powerful report into Greyhound Racing revealed serious misconduct by champion trainers and animal cruelty on an almost industrial scale. Caro Meldrum Hanna from Four Corners, how are you? We're just here to ask you a couple of questions. I don't suspect it's a systemic problem at all. I wouldn't believe anything that these people say when it comes to the welfare of their dogs. This shocking story that dominated Australian media for weeks will have a profound impact on the greyhound industry for years to come. It has already led to sackings, the disbanding of boards, 
ongoing criminal investigations and official inquiries to leave the future of an entire sport in the balance. Thank you to the Kennedys, thank you NRMA, thank you P&O. Um, this all began with one woman in Queensland who walked onto a track in Churchable to pick up a, a greyhound who was probably going to uh, suffer the fate of almost 20,000 every year, um, death, uh, and was uh, there to pick it up and to adopt this dog out. And she entered this property and just her inner antenna went up, her instincts went off, and she left this, this property and rang Animal Liberation Queensland and said, this place smells like death. Someone needs to go and have a look. So Animal Liberation Queensland did, a couple of young, very intelligent investigators, and they just put some eyes over this property. And within a week, they captured day in, day out, an illegal practice, live baiting, uh, and they passed this footage on to Animals Australia. Uh, Lynn White, who heads, who heads that organisation, then met with Four Corners, and we decided to see just how big this possibly could be. Uh, we knew it couldn't be just in Queensland, but where do we go to find it? Uh, so with a bit of digging, uh, a lot of thinking and a lot of risk taking, we found those properties around the country and we watched them for weeks. And the same thing was happening. Uh, and it was very disturbing. And I, after hundreds of hours of vision, there was one moment which really struck me, and it was when a father entered a property in Victoria uh, with his young daughter. She would be, I don't know, six to eight years old. And this little, little girl was holding a bag of live rabbits and was pulling them out and passing them to her father. And as they were strapped down to the lure, and that's when I realised, gee, there's something really wrong here. And gee, this has been going on for a long time. It was so normalised. Um, so the ABC, thank you. We took a lot of risks in getting this to air. Um, uh, lots of ways we obtained vision. And thank you to producer Sam Clark, who trawled hundreds of hours, matching faces that we'd never seen before. And we needed to find out who these people were and who they were shocked us. They were the biggest names in the sport. They were the stewards, the police of this sport. There was even the former second in charge of the regulator in Victoria. So um, it's, it's led to change, which is still happening, lots of prosecutions. M to make these programs, it's a team. Thank you to the editor, Michael Nettleship, to everyone behind it, from graphics, to our cameraman, Jeff Lai, who I've mentioned earlier, who was just incredible and to Sue Spencer, our executive producer, who oversaw this one. She was right behind us all the way, and she um, actually gave me my, my first break as a young researcher at the ABC straight out of university, and she taught me to believe in myself and to encourage but tame the inner mongrel in me. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm sure you can tell I'm very nervous. Sandra Sully, I can't believe you were nervous before. I, I need you up here to help me with this. Um, so lastly, um, look, journalism personally, it does, it's hard, you know. You, you're not home very much when you work on programs like this. So I want to thank my family uh, uh, and to Laura Ford, who has always encouraged me. She's not here tonight, but a big thank you to her. And... Um, Researcher, Max Murch as well. Again, Sam. Um, and go four corners, you know. We take risks. It's a great program and it brings great change. So thank you.
is Sarah McLeod and these are my friends over here. This is my buddy KJ and Mick Skelton on the drums that I've dragged along to play with me here tonight. Thank you very much for having us at your award ceremony. This is kind of like the Arias but way cooler because it's about the news which is my favorite TV show. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> 